School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by the Alberta Canola Producers Commission. As we move down the table here, now we're going to get into the typical seedling blight pathogens that affect canola. And there's mainly three fungal genera, Rhizoctonia, Fusarium, and Pythium. The end result of their uh, attacks are always the same. The seedlings uh, usually topple over. They're attacked either at the root or at the soil line. They develop a wire stem or a thinning of the stem which makes them weak and they fall over and they invariably will die when they're infected early. In the cups that you see in front of you here which have been inoculated in this case with Rhizoctonia, you'll see that in some cases there's no seedlings emerge from the soil because of seed decay. Some actually did emerge and ended up dying off and we call that symptom damping off. And then others, the one that is living is relatively weak compared to the healthy seedlings that you see here. So um, you can have sort of three effects, seed decay, damping off, and later on uh, seedling blight as, the, as they age. And if they're still, uh, the disease is still taking hold, they, the plants may die uh, even at this stage. Okay, moving along this, this direction here in this corner, we have Alternaria, which we'll talk about when we go up to this table up here, but it is a disease that causes a leaf and pod spot on canola. And when it infects the pods, it often grows through the pod wall onto the seeds and may become then a seed-borne disease. And when that seed is planted, it's, it's not very vigorous because the pathogen is growing in the seed coat, sometimes into the cotyledons. And when these seeds germinate, they're weak. And you can see the difference between a healthy and an affected seedling. So this points out the importance of using good quality seed that's been tested in a lab and found to be free or low levels of the seed-borne pathogens. The uh, alternaria fungus, like the black leg fungus, forms a toxin. And you can see around these points of infection here that we're seeing, again, a purpling or a chlorosis uh, in parts of the leaves adjacent to these wounded areas. So the University of Alberta produced these uh, for us. Uh, they probably used alternary infected seed from an infected crop as a seed source here in addition to the artificial inoculations. In the front of these displays, you'll actually see what these fungi look like in culture when they're um, plated out at a lab and allowed to grow out. And this is the way we identify them. We allow them to grow out and, and to um, exhibit the spores that they typically produce, and that's how we recognize them. As we move around here to the last two uh, types of seedling blight, we have fusarium. That's uh, this fungus here, a very important and common group of plant pathogens. And Fusarium uh, will attack young seedlings. It's a soil-borne organism like the Rhizoctonia is. And um, it tends to be a little more active in, in warmer soils on the moist to dry side. Rhizoctonia likes cooler soils, again on the moist side. Uh, Pythium, the third and perhaps the most important of the seedling blight organisms, this white cottony growth here. It loves the cool wet soil conditions. It's actually a water mold that has a swimming spore stage and it needs water films in the soil uh, in order to uh, allow its zoospores or swimming spores to, to follow chemical signals through the soil to the roots and infect. And uh, Pythium can be a very destructive disease when you have growing conditions as we had in the spring of 2011, lots of rain and cold conditions, and here you can see the effects of, of Pythium. Again, uh, the absence of plants or dying plants here suggests we either had some seed decay or damping off happening, and we have only one seedling that survived. 
And that's often typical of these seedling diseases is that they will occur in patches or spots in the field. They're not necessarily uniform throughout. It just depends where the fungal inoculum, that, that's, that is the <coughs> spores or reproductive structures are, are close to where the seedlings are growing and they will then attack them. So to uh, minimize these seedling diseases, we want to obviously use high quality seed. It's been tested for germination and vigor and freedom from pathogens. We want to treat the seed to provide a, a bit of added protection to whatever may be in the soil in the field. We want to prepare our seed bed appropriately, make sure it's firm and we don't plant too deep. The longer the seed seedlings are below ground, the more likely they are to fall prey to the organisms like uh, Pythium and uh, Rhizoctonia and Fusarium.